It's the beginning of the 2023 Formula 1 season and all the teams have had their launches and testing is complete. Beginning the second season of the current regulations, development trends have been established and converging solutions are becoming apparent. With plenty of other videos about these cars aerodynamics, which I recommend watching, this video will be an overview of the parts of the cars I think are important, with an emphasis placed on shape interpretation. With the car launches being mostly digital, their renders were met with both hype and scepticism. After waiting for the shakedown filming days, it was shown that most teams were pretty honest, just a couple of red herrings to suck in some analysis. It was really only Red Bull hiding their car till official testing. Here I'll take images from the previous weeks and do an analysis of the aerodynamics as a general trend across the field. Testing has given a few clues with some flow viz to aid our understanding of the complexity each team is trying to utilise. The working assumption I'm using here is that the team with established success and exhibits more complexity will likely have better aerodynamics but also it is assumed that all teams are competent. I will highlight why something is complex and competent when we get to it. To start, there was a nice launch video by Alpha Tauri that had streamlines around the car, most notably not under the car. These are an exaggeration on real data. It doesn't really give anything away to another team, which shouldn't be a surprise. Side by side with my CAD model, it does show the basic model characteristic of these cars. However, the primary purpose of such an animation is to illustrate the context of an artifact, and that is the fact that this is an aerodynamic object. Outside this artistic context, and because most of the car's downforce comes from the floor, these streamlines above the car don't say anything specific. With the model being accurate, we can therefore read a general philosophy of the Red Bull side pod, cannon cooling exits, and etc. Comparing streamlines, gives the suggestion that these 2023 cars have a general characteristic. So using this logic, an animation with vorticity and velocity field around this CFD model, these visuals have a little bit more information than the streamlines, giving an example of problematic areas of these cars, like the turbulence around the cockpit, front wing upwash, and floor edge management. A good but basic example of the characteristics of the downforce of these ground effects cars is the centerline pressure plot. The speed of sound property of pressure gradients in air means that the centerline of the car represents its distribution, discounting vortex structures. This plot indicates a basic characteristics of the dominant aerodynamic components, for example the front wing, floor fences and diffuser. There are issues with this model and they are represented in this plot which is in itself a useful counterexample to the real cars I'll be illustrating. So studying the analysis, we'll start with the front wing, move to the floor inlet, a complex part of the car, then the centre section, influenced by the side pod and floor edge, finally the rear of the car, which will include how the air gets to the rear wing. The front wings are altogether highly restricted, complex and influential. The diversity of these devices suggests that they are being used in a number of different and complex ways beyond just creating downforce. They are shaping the air that will impact the rest of the car as indicated by the streamlines. Subtle changes can build. Each bump, dip and bulge means something. I played around with the wing elements before, but all I got from it was that it was difficult. Therefore, I'm going to focus mostly on the nose as this is the part of the car we can read anything from. The solutions can be classified as round, flat, connected to the lower element or not. W Williams, Aston and AlphaTauri were helpful with some flow viz. We cannot see up close, so no specific streak lines, but the splatter down the stream indicates how the air from the front impacts the rear. A point about flow viz, it shows how the air is pulling at the surface, indicating high shear stress with less flow viz and low with more, like the leading edge indicating a stagnation point. The smearing of the Williams around the camera and suspension is a product of flow. We notice on the rounded nose it tends to be not rounded all the way up the chassis. A more rounded nose has a smaller high pressure region and the air should accelerate around the edge, increasing its efficiency. The problem is there is a large wing around the side so this limits the efficiency. But what we can say is the round is connected to the nose as its length 
or at least its spatiality, is associated with the wing. The Alfa Romeo is the most extreme nose, kind of blunt, but the rounds off, suggesting that the air will specifically fall off the nose on these rounds. I like this car a bit, and people are ranking it solid in the middle, though below the Alpine, which I may disagree. Under the nose, the front wing blends up and arches back down to where the nose finishes and the chassis begins. This arch down ends pressure recovery of the underside of the nose and centre wing. It would be present on the centre plot here. My model doesn't have the chassis and nose joined this way, so the pressure recovery is therefore slower. Used to redirect the upwash of the front wing down, the suspension within the regulation box has this as a priority function. Mercedes is the most extreme attempt to blend the air. The pushrod has a significant amount of bodywork at the top to pull the air down. Chassis with more body panels like this is one of the biggest changes for this year, as teams are trying to find exploits with a highly restrictive rule set. Subtle changes of shape from the surfaces are now almost the only way performance can be found. These cars are a much simpler form by the removal of most of the cascading surfaces. Now the only way to manipulate pressure fields is by changing the continuous surfaces. The complexity has moved from building flow structures to the complexity of refining a larger flow field. A difference between controlling multiple vortices through multiple surfaces to the specific control of a flow field with just a couple of surfaces. The floor's leading edge is a complicated part of the car with multiple solutions. Air from underneath the chassis builds in pressure blocked by the central floor and fences that are positioned to produce a significant amount of front downforce. We've seen glimpses of these important floor fences, but we're going to have to wait for a car to stop on track on a race weekend to see what anyone is actually doing here. One particularly important component is the interface between the chassis and the floor's leading edge. High pressure escapes from this region and over the floor's leading edge, which needs to be managed. Everybody is doing something here. Ferrari has something similar to last year's with well integrated floor and chassis. This solution is an effective way to manage this junction, but restricts the position of the inner floor fence. The inherently lossy air from this, even this as a well managed intersection, is digested by an air duct and blown out above the side pod. Red Bull, on the other hand, has sculpting of the chassis bodywork to blend the upwash and integrate it back into the free stream. All the teams are paying attention to this area of the car and have specific solutions. Aston has a channel that bleeds a jet of underbody air. This particular part will have a direct effect on the quality of downstream air. Red Bull are using it more or better, as it appears, to the rest of the field. Their adventures into Flowviz indicates what they are looking at. The most visually apparent part of these cars is the side pod. Convergence in this area has been reduced to a number of distinct versions and differ mostly in the floor body blend, with the delineation between the side pod and the floor body being the subtlety to look for. Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes, and are all extreme versions of this solution. Mercedes doesn't have an undercut, Ferrari's undercut ends early, and Red Bull is continuous and late. Conveniently, the last two have flow viz this area. Mercedes on the other hand had a hydraulic failure as they were doing theirs. Ferrari appears nice and blended, all the flow is travelling in specific directions, aiding the performance of a curiously simple floor edge. Air that was high pressure in the undercut accelerates around the corner, dropping in pressure and pulling air away from the floor edge, just as the floor fences end. 30 centimeters or so back, the air starts to stream towards the floor edge. I suspect Ferrari has some room for development here. Red Bull is very different and likely performs very well. It has a large continuous undercut that pushes out late, ending quite abruptly. Similar to Ferrari, the air drops in pressure around this radius. Due to it being sharpish, it is likely to be a significant low pressure field, and as a result forms a specific structure here, illustrated by the flow viz. And by the time the vortex is formed and air is being thrown back down onto the floor, the edge wing starts. From this image, this vortex follows the floor edge, and it looks like it will pass in between the rear wheel and floor. Now the rear bodywork. Again, this part of the car has teams reaching multiple solutions due to the complexity of the rear tyre, side pod, and floor interactions. 
the general trend is pulling the bodywork in and shrink wrapping the gearbox with the ultimate goal of exposing the upper floor and beam wing to mass flow. It would also likely reduce the high pressure field in front of the rear wheel. Alpha is illustrative of this concept and has some flow viz to match. A well executed solution that matches the rest of the car. The bulbous cannons are a solution to concentrate the lossy air created by the cooling and the cockpit. Lossy in the sense that the car is in the wind tunnel, the opposite to the track where the air gains energy and information. Mercedes has the sharpest version meaning that the air is less likely to reach around the side like the Alpha. Running my animation again with the vorticity map, the coloured rotating air will be bound and released exactly where the team wants. Extra cooling louvers situated on this radius will either fall above or below the radius depending on your. This overview of Formula 1 from pre-season shows the direction of development of this generation of cars. The interesting thing about these cars is how the air needs to be manipulated using methods that are a bit different to how it was done previously. It would be fascinating to see how the complexity will build into the airflow from here. We have seen hints, but I suspect we will be surprised about how much can be done over the coming years.